Welcome to a video discussing pages four and five of the section 4.4 notes. Here we're going to start with example 11. You're asked to find at what point in the graph of y equals 2 to the x minus 5 is a tangent line perpendicular to the line y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. Now, if you're going to be perpendicular to any line, your perpendicular slope will be negative 1 over your uh, original slope. So it's always a negative reciprocal, right? Or you could think of it as a normal line being perpendicular to the um, tangent line. That's exactly what we have going on here. Um, or something kind of like that. So our slope here is negative one third. So our perpendicular slope being negative one over negative one third, which of course is three. So we have to um, take our derivative. So y prime will be 2 to the x times natural log of 2. And we have to set that equal to 3. Because remember, the derivative is going to be the slope of the tangent line, but we have to be perpendicular to this, right? We want a tangent line perpendicular to that, so we had to go to the slope of 3. So 2 to the x equals 3 over natural log of 2. Um, now, solve for x, you're going to do convert that to a log. So it be log base 2 of 3 over natural log of 2. So if you're comfortable with all the log stuff here. Um, and then you can actually use a calculator to kind of work out the rest of that. Oh, my saw is not working again. I don't know why that's happening. Um, so that would be roughly 2.113. Now, what I probably suggest that you do, because you'll actually need to be um, more precise on the free response on the AP exam, because we do have to find the Y coordinate as well. Um, we're actually going to store this in our calculator. I'll show you how you can do that if you don't remember or never done that before. So <clears throat> we go to our calculator, which I have right here. It's going to take a little while to get started. Okay. Now, what I do is, um, again, when I solve for x, I wrote as a log. So I'm going to do um, alpha window, option 5, log base 2. Uh, 3 over natural log of 2 so you get 2.1137 now I'm going to store that so you hit store which is right here hit alpha hit any letter you like you can see the letters are on the top right corner of each of the buttons so um, alpha map is like where A is located. So I have that. Then I'm going to plug it into the original function. So I'm going to do 2 raised to the alpha A and minus 5. That way I get a more accurate um, y coordinate, which is negative 0.672. So on the AP exam, they want you to usually round to um, three decimal places. Or you cut off up to three decimal places. So I'll do 2.114. That was technically what I had when I round up and 0.672. Uh, but if you did this, if you did 2.113 and 0.671, they would accept that also. Now, if you didn't, um, if you weren't terribly accurate, if you did just type in 2.113 into the exponent here, So if I did 2 raised to the 2.113 minus 5, notice we got a slightly um, different answer there. 
Uh, sorry, that was negative, by the way, for the um, Y coordinate. But notice that I didn't get uh, 0.672, I got 0.674. And our answer actually would be scores incorrect, just so you know, on the AP exam. So we have to be very mindful about rounding through decimal places and be precise. So using that store feature um, is pretty handy. And we'll do that more often uh, with other um, problems throughout the year. Okay, let's go back to the video again. This is kind of relevant to what we're experiencing right now. We're definitely in the flu season. Uh, as you know, uh, I had a nasty cold. Um, definitely not coronavirus because I tested negative twice. So uh, at different times, but you know, all, you can also apply this for the coronavirus too because it's, it's, it's um, increasing quite quickly. So uh, this is a logistic function. You might remember this from pre-calculus, hopefully. And um, we're um, modeling um, how many people get infected with the flu T days after the outbreak. So T is the number of days after the outbreak. And we're going to give our answers to the nearest whole number. So first of all, let's estimate the initial number of people infected with the flu. So T equals zero. And what I promise us that we do is we go back to our calculator again. And let me put the original function in, which is 400. So I could actually do as a fraction, alpha y equals, select the, that option there, so 400 uh, over 1 plus e, 1 plus e, and 6 minus x, 6 minus x. OK, so that's y1. So I'm just going to do alpha trace and put in zero. You can also plug it straight up, and you know, just with the way you see it. So 0.989. But we want to round the nearest whole number, so we'll say one person is affected on the first day, or the, uh, or initially you have one person affected, and that person will obviously infect more people. So we're going to Find P of one, P of three, and P of six. And you're gonna see it's gonna increase quite quickly. Just so you know, uh, 400 is what we call the limiting factor. Um, so ultimately you can't um, infect infinite number of people. It's a very limited amount because you can infect all the people at the school. And so if you let T be a really big number, ultimately, for people will be infected, right? I mean, that's just, so logistic functions kind of look like this. Graphically, you look at exponential nature and then they kind of level off afterwards. So if you were to graph this in Desmos, you'd see that the graph kind of look like this over here. But anyway, let's figure out how many people are affected after day one, day three, and day six. You're gonna see it's gonna be pretty significant after the days pass. So I'll just hit uh, second equals, just to repeat that. Change that to one, let me clear my screen. So about three people were infected after one day. So you know that one person probably um, <clears throat> kind of touched with two people, so two more people got infected, right? And this is a running total, just so you know. This is a running total. It's not new people infected. That would be actually a derivative, which we're going to do in just a second. This is more just how many people are infected um, after a certain number of days. So after three days, uh, so say on Monday, some kid comes to school sick, uh, and then on Tuesday, three people are sick. And then by um, Thursday, so three days after um, he showed up to school, 19 people are sick. And say we don't really catch this. So we have Friday passes and then the weekend. So six days after the outbreak, or it's a boarding school, I guess. So, you know, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Everyone's there. Um, didn't think of that. So um you got half the school sick in six days. That's crazy. This is why we have to contain viruses very well. You know, keep your distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, all that good stuff, right? So anyway, um, we had uh, three people infected here. We had 19 people infected here. We had half the school infected after six days. Now, what I'm really kind of curious to know is how fast it's spreading. And that's really relevant. Um, now that you guys have uh, learned some calculus, you guys understand derivatives, uh, we can actually apply this to actually what's happening in our world today with coronavirus. Um, you know, yes, we want to know uh, how many people are infected. We want to know how fast it's moving. And so uh, we would actually apply calculus principles to uh, the rate of infection. Um, 
So how fast is the flu spreading after three days? Well, here I have to do a derivative. So P prime of T, and I'll have to do a quotient rule here. Or you could do, um, if you want, it's kind of up to you. You could um, rewrite this as 400 times one plus E six minus T raised to negative one power. And then you could do a chain rule if you don't want to do quotient rule, it's up to you. So if I do it this way, then my derivative would be negative 400 times one plus E six minus T raised to negative two power. Remember to keep the inside intact. And then times the derivative of the inside. One plus E six minus T derivative. Okay. So P prime of T will be negative 400. And I'll put the, this back at the bottom. One plus E six minus T squared because remember it's negative, raised to negative two, so it's squared. And then derivative of that is gonna be zero plus, you know, you keep it as is, e six minus t, then times derivative of the exponent, which is negative one. Um, cool. So you get 400, because you know, the negatives will cancel, times e six minus t over one plus e six minus t squared. Now I can plug in three and six to see how fast the flu is spreading after three days and after six days. And remember the graphically, the logistic function kind of looks like this. You can also go in Desmos. You're gonna see a very probably fast um, increase at day three. And then it's gonna kind of slow down at day six because you've infected so many people. Um, at least that's what I expect, but I could be wrong. Um, so let's uh, work this out. So we'll go back to our calculator. Now, the nice thing is that we do have y2 as uh, the derivative of y1 at x equals x. Uh, but just to make sure I found the derivative correctly, let me go ahead and clear this. <clears throat> let me clear my screen because it's a little messy right now. Let me type in my uh, derivative I found by hand, just to make sure I did that correctly. So 400 times e raised to the six minus x over, I see that's one plus e six minus x squared. Yeah. I'm gonna turn off y1. Y1 is off now. Let's go to graph, a little graph in the standard window. There's the first one. And I don't see a second, so that's a good sign. So see, I'm on Y2 right now. And if I hit the down key, I'm on Y3. So I definitely did it correctly. Now, to actually evaluate the derivative, I hit alpha trace Y2, plug in three, so that's what we got for the derivative. You can also plug in the y3 also, because I know I did that correctly, but why not just plug in y2, because that's the actual derivative function of the calculator. And we'll just plug in six. Okay, so actually um, it was going for increasing quickly on day six, so <laughs> I was wrong. So, um, so what this means, so we had about 18 and 100. So p prime of three was 18 and p prime of six was 100. So what this means is that 18 people per day are getting infected on day three. So we're starting to see a very sharp increase where on day six, 100 people per day are getting infected. Um, so you can see why it's, it's tremendously important to contain viruses. Now this is a boarding school, right? which is my, maybe somewhere out in the East Coast, somewhere uh, maybe on top of Perch of a Hill, really beautiful vistas, I don't know. I've never really been to a boarding school before. I'm a West Coast guy. Um, but <clears throat> um, you can imagine with the coronavirus, right? Like how contagious it is and why we've limited, um, you know, uh, big gatherings. Uh, you know, haven't had, you know, we've had sporting events, but we haven't had uh, people attend sporting events, right? Um, you know, concerts have been, have been non-existent, uh, bars and restaurants are closed, 
Um, Gavin Newsom put a curfew because you know he knows that you know during the holidays people get together. Um, uh, schools obviously have stayed closed, um, and so you know you can see why it's tremendously important to um, prevent outbreak. We see mathematically, right, that you know the rate can increase quite quickly if we don't contain it. Um, so hopefully you could see some of the relevance of what we're doing in our everyday world. Um, so, you know, your deep understanding of calculus can help you get a better uh, handle of the pandemic, where I think a lot of people are not as well versed in math, have a hard time understanding the math that goes into it. So uh, when you ask, hey, when is this going to be used in the real world? Hey, it's happening now. <laughs> so uh, never ask me that question again. I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, you can always ask me that question. When do we use this? Um, I, I'll be honest, like a lot of the stuff that you do in um, <clears throat> calculus on this course, it's really helped you become a more advanced and sophisticated thinker because um, you really have to kind of think uh, very deeply and abstractly, if, that, if that's word, um, with this kind of stuff. So anyway, I always think it's kind of cool stuff here. Um, then here's a proof, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, the power rule. Um, I'm sorry, that's not the proof of the power rule. Um, sorry, that was uh, actually over here. Um, this is a proof of why ETX um, is the way it is. So let's go over this really quickly, and then we'll be done with this video. <clears throat> so we know the derivative of ETX is ETX. We talked about that in class um, today. So first, we need to establish the following limit, that if, uh, if you take the limit of E to the H minus 1 over H, uh, what would that be? Uh, e, to the H, sorry, e to the H minus 1 over H. Um, so you could use a table, or you could plug in values close to 0. So I'm going to use a calculator in this case. So um, let me just go back up here and change that to um, alpha y equals option one, e to the x minus one, over x, clear. And if I plug in something uh, close to zero, so I go alpha trace, let's say I plug in like 0 0.001, Or if I plug in and say like negative 0 0.001. Hmm. Should, should have inserted. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so, we see, so it's close to one. So we can establish that limit. <laughs> And if we use our traditional definition of a derivative, which we know is this. So I have e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. And if you use a little bit of a um, uh, property of exponents and get a little creative here, e to the x plus h is no different than saying this. Because we know when you have two bases, two powers of the same base, you can add the exponents. But when you have a power with the exponents being added, you can break it apart as a product of um, those powers are the same base. And again, the limit as h approaches zero, I can't get lazy there. Um, so if I were to work that out, that'd be e to the x times e to the h, right? Minus e to the x over h, when as h approaches zero. And then you could factor e to the x. That's an H, by the way. It looks like a B. The limit as H approaches zero. And now what you can do is you can pull the E to the X off to the side here, because now you're just focused on the H part. And we know that's just one. So C to the X So C to the X. So that's why that, that works the way it does. Okay, so that ends the video.